As I work my way through the Famicom library, I really try my best to see the good side of every game. They were made to entertain people, after all, and I want to find that entertainment in them. Unfortunately, Superstar Pro Wrestling was one of the most miserable slogs I've ever had for this project. Although the US version replaced the characters with WCW wrestlers, the characters in Superstar Pro Wrestling are not actual wrestlers. They are legally distinct knockoffs of real wrestlers, and in a few cases, they're based on wrestlers from other media. When you start out, you can choose to play a one-on-one -on -one match or a tag team match. The timer increases for tag teams, and if you choose two-player mode, then the timer increases a lot. You can select from 12 of these wrestlers, and really the only difference between them is what moves you have to select from. There are 16 different special moves, Every character has access to a set of eight of them, and before every match, you choose which four you want to use. Each of those gets assigned a direction on the D-pad. The way that a match works is that A kicks and B punches. At the start, you have to land four hits on your opponent in order to stun them. These don't have to be consecutive hits, and as the wrestler weakens, it takes fewer hits to stun them. When they're stunned, then the A button can activate any regular move that everyone knows. These are things like a simple flip or throwing them into the ropes. Pressing the A button once while they're stunned gets them into position for a move, and then you press the direction on the D-pad and hit A again to perform a special move. You need to hold the A button down, because as you're doing the move, a power bar will appear. It'll go back and forth to indicate how much damage the move will do, and releasing A locks in the damage. How high that bar goes will also show you how weak your opponent is. If they're very weak, then you can hit the A and B button at the same time to perform a super move, and those tend to be some kind of flying move that will pin them as part of the process. Once they're on the ground, you can also use the A button to try to pin them. So here's the big problem with Superstar Pro Wrestling. The computer opponents are perfect. They always attack perfectly, they attack continuously, and their moves have priority over yours. You have maybe a one or two frame window in which you can attack them. So try as you might, the computer is going to be able to throw you around a lot more than you'll be able to throw it around. Checking online, I found that the solution that people had for this was to use an auto-fire controller. People were saying that it was the only way that they could play it. While you'll still get hit if you use an auto-fire controller, you can do enough damage that you'll be able to win the match without too much effort. So the game is either impossible or utterly trivial, neither of which are fun. In the tag team match, you have to go to the lower left-hand corner to tag in your teammate. They exist in a weird, unloaded graphics state as well. You can see it when they jump in to save you from a submission attack. In the tag team matches, you can't break out of the submission holds, and you always have your partner jump in. When someone's tossed out of the ring, there's a chance that someone from the crowd could throw out a weapon like a wrench. Only the wrestler who tossed the other one out of the ring can pick it up. If you got tossed out of the ring, you can't touch it. After a match, you can hit select to bring up a password that will let you continue the game. Your goal is to defeat all of the other wrestlers, whether that's taking them on two at a time in a tag team match, or just one on one. Superstar Pro Wrestling was a pretty miserable game to play against the computer. I had to resort to a two-player match just to get footage of some special moves. It looks better than most of the other wrestling games on the Famicom, and maybe that's due to it being developed by Nihon Busan, better known as Nichibutsu. It plays terribly as a single-player experience, though. Maybe it's better with two players? A lot of bad games become more enjoyable when you have two people at it. Still, if you have to play two players to make a game interesting, why don't you just play a good game in the first place?